The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Our first reading is from Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you so shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lamb had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to the grace of in which we stand. As we boast our hope of sharing the glory of God, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were there still weak, at the right time Christ died for the un ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, though perhaps for good ones someone might act, actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks. to Matthew. Praise Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus. And Thaddeus. 
Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Where have we seen the crowds, the harassed and helpless ones like sheep without a shepherd? All we have to do is turn on the news, and we see the crowds. This past week, we have seen women who have been pushed out of their pulpits by one of the largest Christian denominations in the United States, and we have seen the congregations that are standing by them, even though that means being kicked out of the Southern Baptist Convention. We see the crowds. We see the impact of poverty in our schools and our neighborhoods. We see the lingering effects of the pandemic on our economy and our communities, but also on our hearts and minds. We see the ways that people hurt one another, that we hurt one another. We see the crowds. We see so many crowds. We see people who are harassed, sometimes to death. We see people who are helpless in the face of violence, illness, hopelessness, like sheep without a shepherd we are. And what did Jesus do when he saw these crowds? He had compassion on them. And out of that compassion, he sent 12 disciples into the crowds. 12 disciples to cast out evil to cure every disease, every sickness. Twelve of them to face up to all evil and illness in those crowds of thousands upon thousands of harassed and helpless people. Twelve. Does 12 seem like enough to do all that healing? To heal all of that brokenness in the world? It isn't. And Jesus knows it. But he also knows that this is only the beginning. Jesus doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop at sending the twelve. We have to remember that at the end of Matthew, in chapter 28, as we heard just a few weeks ago, ironically, Jesus comes back from the tomb and gives his disciples what we call the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. 
This is part of a long story of Jesus calling us into the crowds. And Jesus called those disciples by name. And he calls each of us disciples by name, too. Your names are implied. So listen. Jesus calls Simon and Andrew, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, James and Thaddeus, Simon and Judas, and you. Say your name. Sarah. You are called. Now one commentator for this text noticed that to noted that to be sent by Jesus is, is, in some sense, to be sent as Jesus. And so, you are sent, we are sent as Jesus. And to what? Into the crowds. To find the lost, the harassed, the helpless to proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. We know that's not always literal. There are all sorts of broken, evil things in this world that we are called to attend to. To give of your gifts, as generously as those give gifts were given to you by God. You are called. And so, as you go out today to hear whatever is going to happen next in our world this week, I invite you to listen. Listen for the harassed and helpless in the crowds. Listen to those who are calling out to you and act. And remember, Jesus is with you always to the end of the age. Amen. We sing together our hymn of the day, number 575, In Christ Called to Baptize.
Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us pray for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bring healing where there is pain, and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. We pray especially for all who are named in our prayer list. And all who we name before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Encourage and, and encourage and guide all fathers who seek to be positive, supportive, and loving figures for their families and loved ones. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving their fathers and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy. For all the saints we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another.
We continue with our offering, and our offering hymn today is number 579, verses 2 and 3.
We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> A few announcements before we conclude our worship today. Next Saturday evening, we are doing something a little new. We are having family movie night here at church. Um, it will be Saturday night at 5 p.m., June 24th. Um, we will be downstairs. I can't tell you what the movie is on our worship recording because of copyright law, but if you want to know, you can ask me on your way out the door. <laughs> and if you would like to join us, um, there is a... RSVP available on our website. If you just scroll down the homepage to where it says upcoming events, you will find it right there. Um, and we would love to have you with us. The movie is rated PG. It is for families. We'll also have an activity and discussion that goes along with it. Um, and if you let us know we'll, that you'll be there, we can give you pizza. So, <laughs> all right. As you notice, we have new gluten-free communion crackers um, that we will be using from here on out. Um, this is partially so that we may be uh, welcoming and inclusive to those of us in the congregation who have dietary needs. Um, it also makes life easier for those who are preparing and serving communion. And so um, we will be using these crackers from here on out. I hope hope they were all right. They, I liked them. Um, <laughs> and um, this summer, we will be having communion every Sunday, and this is the first Sunday of that. And so from here on out through the summer, we will be celebrating communion every Sunday so that um, as your travels take you away, if you happen to only be here on the second or fourth Sunday through August, no problem, we've got you covered. Okay, <laughs> you can have communion too. Are there any announcements that I am missing? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. um, envelopes. If you run out of old envelopes, we still have plenty to use up. Um, they're by the printer. There's a file cabinet that's labeled old envelopes. Um, they can be used up, or however you're doing it is fine. Just so I have your name if it's cash. So, right. thank you. If you need offering envelopes, we have them. Did you want to share a thank you card? Milestones. Oh, milestones. Perfect. Well, then let's transition into milestones. <laughs> Are there any milestones All to right, share then today? I will do. Thank you. <laughs> this comes from Good Earth Village. Thank you for submitting $550 to Christian leadership. Good Earth. Village has been highlighting, should have reading glasses, sorry about that, <laughs> uh, leaders for over 50 years because of your generous support. Awesome. Milestone. Any other milestones to share this week? 58 years ago, tomorrow, I married a beautiful woman. Aww, 58th anniversary tomorrow. celebrated their 11th wedding anniversary on Friday. Oh and then um, Corey and I's niece celebrated her 21st birthday yesterday. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, she oh, knows she feels at family dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> Renee celebrated her birthday yesterday. <laughs> Renee's birthday was yesterday. yesterday. Milestone. Officiated my first wedding last weekend, and it was for my brother and sister in law. It was very special. Any other milestones to share? 
This is honestly one of my favorite parts of worship Thank every week. Okay. I love oh, hearing okay. that. There was moisture coming from <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Finally rain. Oh, my gosh. oh my gosh, and we needed it for the rain. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's good. I invite you to stand as you receive the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in even the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn number 535. Hallelujah, we sing more praises.